Hello everybody, welcome to the next chapter of the Hideous Halls of Modal Blub with our Ashen Hounds mercenaries going at it again. So, a couple things I want to say right before we dive into this is that the first 38 minutes of this was the tail end of my previous game where I had the OBS glitch where I had to redo all of this. Again, I have the official audio and all the dice rolls, but the visuals were gone, so I had to recreate the visuals. But either way, it's only for the first 38 minutes. Then the last hour, we're back to normal again with the OBS working properly because that was a new session. I had time to figure it all out. Yeah, it took me about an extra 10 hours or more of editing to friggin' go through all this again and do all this, but I don't even know what. I don't care. I did it anyways. Now, just because I want to preserve my game for the long term, you know, I'm just throwing this channel out here for fun, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. If so, comment below. Let me know how you're enjoying it. And I won't have that OBS mistake again because I removed every friggin' hotkey from the program, so it's not going to happen again. Either way, this is a good session. One last thing, and around the 40 minute mark when the game gets back to normal, you're going to notice that was a new session and my group decided to try to speed up crawling because crawling, if you go turn for turn, can be horribly slow, which is kind of what was happening in the last previous chapters. This time, um, we're trying the approach of everybody just simultaneously act. Everybody do a move, everybody do an action, and it did actually speed up a lot and we get more and more used to it now. Once everybody gets in that groove, especially by the next episode, you know, you're going to start to see crawling will speed up. We're going to knock down and get through a lot more of the dungeon with each chapter. All right, that's enough ranting. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, before we dive into this, I wanted to bring up something that I thought you would enjoy. Uh, right here, if you remember under your guild tab, on the left of this guild tab, there's fallen members. If you click that, you'll see in order of their death, we have Krug, and there's a little caption underneath, level one fighter, his chaotic nature caused the death of his party. <laughs> if you scroll down to Zale, level one ranger, his bad luck slash skill is known for giving rangers a bad reputation. <laughs> Barristan, known for leading his party into trouble. And Rosebeard, said the wrong thing that led to a chaotic battle in the dark. I have to say, Rosebeard was pretty good. He was a more moral compass, head-on stray character of the group. Uh, he was. But, uh, you know, I just didn't have anything bad to write about you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I, I feel like this section is going to grow really fast. <laughs> yeah. So I figured I'd keep track of the characters here. Yeah. Of course, this is the graveyard. <clears throat> and um, we'll put... Oh, shame. And we'll put one little quote for what their most memorable moment is. Time passes as the guild does not hear from the initial group of mercenaries that were sent out to the Bitter Mold Keep. After several days, the guildmaster takes it upon himself to repost the contract once again. <laughs> and with the new batch of Fresh mercenaries, people looking for work, signing up to the Ashen Hounds Guild to try and either make a name for themselves, be a hero, find the treasure, or what have you. They have their entry level quest to see if they can get accepted into the Ashen Hounds. So you are given the same contract, which I will not go over again because you all know it. Uh, you get your tour of the facilities, essentially all the same kind of treatment is done to every new recruit. And with that, you are told to head out and work as a unit and stay in the light. So, let's go over each character. S this time, starting with, I believe it is Stranger Luther... Gravestone. If you'd like to describe a little bit about yourself. I sure, I'm just gonna pull up the picture here. Uh, yes, he is a human. Uh, very short, uh, shaved on the sides, kind of head, short hair. Very similar to the picture. I don't know if you can pull the picture up for everybody. Uh, I got a scar under my left eye. Uh, just some basic stubble facial hair. I'm dressed in all black, uh, leather armors, jackets, everything. Uh, I always kind of have a scowl on my face, and I'm not very trusting of many people. 
but uh, I just keep silent most of the time uh, with that information. You can state your uh, race and uh, class if you want. Since I oh, I am uh, a ranger, ranger? Uh, That's a good this way. time. Um, if anybody oh. knows me or has heard of me in the past, I'm a, I'm a bit of a mercenary. I uh, just signed on to this mercenary sort of uh, group to earn some extra coin. Nothing, uh, nothing holy questing about this guy. Acolyte Bandic. Okay, uh, you see a uh, a short, robust uh, <clears throat> dwarf wearing uh, his leather armor and holding his club in one hand and his holy symbol in the other. Uh, he's uh, very prim, proper, and kept, and uh, Acolyte Bandit Bandek is here to uh, serve the light. Excellent. Uh, moving on up, we'll go with Warrior Rothgar. Yeah, so Warrior Rothgar is a heavyset, muscular, hairy human with uh, dark brown, red hair. Overall, very scruffy, mangy appearance. Um, he's covered in like furs and animal bones, which he wears over his leather armor. Um, very off-putting in the way that he looks uh, and in his mannerisms. Um, you can see like a lot of other people are sort of giving him a wide berth as he sort of goes through. Whether that's intimidate, whether they're intimidated by him or trying to avoid the stench is up for debate. Acolyte Kilvar. <sighs> he uh, has a stern look on his face. And he almost has like a perpetual resting like bitch face. His, his eyebrows are always like scowled. He always looks as if he's judging every single person he he lays eyes up on. Uh, he has tattoos covering a portion of his face, and even on, it goes up underneath his head. You can tell uh, they were tattooed before his hair grew and his beard. Uh, but parts of his arms you see are covered in tattoos. It's all like, uh, like scripture tattooed on him. Um, on his armor, which is leather at the moment, it's mo there's mo on his armor as well and his shield and uh yeah he has a uh, long dark hair uh big gray to it but yeah that's it the only rumor i'm gonna f i feel like giving you is a thief comes back in the town uh basically not a part of the guild uh somebody who was found in the tavern had a few drinks was doing a lot of talking and wind of it got to one of the other guild members. And they caught wind of a rumor that there is a silver dagger <laughs> in Bitter Mold Keep that his partner touched and immediately died. So he fled out of there, narrowly escaping with his life, and made his way back and said, it ain't worth the trouble, and he's not ever going back to Bitter Mold Keep. So that is a rumor I will give you as to avoid you guys having to worry about going and touching a dagger and blowing up again. And because, you know, it's just, I, I'm going to do that with each wipe just to make things a little easier. All right. As the four of you who do not even know each other shared a few words before heading out of town, given the same speech that do your best to work together because you only have each other in the dark. And you hit the street, or sorry, the old roads filled with moonlight. Who will be navigating the path? It is an easy, I'll, easy, navigate. easy intellect check. I, I have advantage on those checks. Oh, you're a ranger, aren't you? Yeah, he is. Do you guys want to let, find the let the ranger do it? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Just uh, that's intelligence, you said. Yep. With advantage. DC nine. Jesus. <laughs> Vice. Rangers aren't that good, I don't think. I think Rangers, the Ranger class is. Broke. Ranger. Oh the ra Ranger class. Good luck. That's why. Oh. Saying. You even had a plus one modifier on like your last Ranger for this check. All right. And advantage. 
Oh. The first random what? encounter check as you get lost. This is for being lost. <laughs> A All terrible right. sense of deja vu. So, <laughs> as you get not even happening, you go off course. You're like suddenly you took a uh, a this small path and quickly the path disappeared and you went up over a hill to get a better view and you're like, oh, where did the road go? Uh roll again. <laughs> I I feel I feel we traveled so far and caught the trail of our previous team, such as oh, if we follow these tracks, we'll go straight to the keep, not realizing that they also screwed up navigating it initially. <laughs> previous team also got lost, so yeah. We were just, so there we that's go. That's who I was tracking. Makes yeah, we were literally sense. following in their footsteps. Okay, so this, this one is much better. much better. So this means you get back on track, you find the main road, and you head. However, you then need to travel for the three hours for the regular random encounter check that would occur. So, on a one, nope, I haven't rolled a single random encounter yet. Um, In that way, and only that way, we've been fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> make sure everybody has a luck token as well. Yep. And with that, you make it to the Bitter Mold Keep, and I'll ask the same question as you get there, without going through all the descriptors again. Do you want to take the main entrance, or risk a random encounter? to search the grounds for an alternate entrance. I'm good for the main entrance. I'm also good for the main entrance. Main entrance it is. Head on. <laughs> I will yield to the group. Let's start it off with Alkalite Bendik. And I will point out that straight ahead, you see the floor is sunken in. <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. Yeah. Uh, there's like I... a melted statue and whatnot. Right. Two, three, four, five. Six. Uh, I am going to walk to here and make a uh, perception check. For what? Uh, I'm just just trying to hear, look and li look and listen for things. Yeah. So you're not yeah. really trying to spot secret doors or traps. You're just trying to do a general perception. Yeah. Okay. I am new to this area and do not know what is going on. Yeah. Okay. Nineteen plus twenty-one. There is a flickering fire source to the northwest, and uh, with since you rolled so high, and even though you technically were not searching for secretive things, because you rolled so high, I'll be a little generous. You see some just over whoops just over here you see uh something that looks out of place on that wall and there's like some mud smeared towards that general area i get a hold my position to alert my allies once they approach me luthor gravestone all right luthor approaches and going to avoid what you said was the obvious sinking area <laughs> mm hmm <clears throat> <laughs> All right, uh, and I will try uh, to use the rest of my movement to sneak up to get a look at what he said was out of place. Two, five, six. Uh, from there, can I uh, do a perception but make it focused on the out of place thing? Yes, for sure. While you do that, I'm also just going to just quickly describe the room. In this room, there was dozens of stone busts from the niches here. Uh, grossly distorted, and the floor is a morass of mud. That's all you really got from here. So, nice. It looks like there's a faint wobbly crack just up where I'm pinging, but it's in the bit of the just where your light kind of shines, just at that kind of corner. It's a little hard for me to ping it. Kilvar. I'll say it's a bit of a, a wobbly crack. Yeah. Kilvar, you I'm going to go here. Uh, looking around the room, I see the statues and all that stuff seems before. I can see the guys investigating. And I'm going to... I shouldn't should investigate. For what? Like, uh, just uh, taking in the general... Sure. I need to cool. uh, I, I What I'm looking for, actually, I'm going to say, is signs of any particular religion. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Wisdom? 
Yeah, because you're just spotting around. Unless you want to use investigate intelligence to... No, it would no. Be, if you're spotting religious symbols, it would be wisdom. So you do not see no. anything religious here. Just a bunch of grotesque statues, melted, deformed. Rothgar, left in the dark as you move up. The dark does not bother Rothgar. Uh, let's see. And, and, and where oh, was that like up in that hallway where you mentioned the wobbling was? One block to the left of where I'm pinging. Okay. Just, but I can't really ping. I don't know if you can see my ping when I do this. You yep. just got the just there. the edge of the light. Probably see my mouse. Okay. Um, since I'm here, I'm going to take a general perception. I'm going to see if there's anything else hidden in this room. Sure. Uh, so that's a perception wisdom, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You critically fail a perception test. You are clearly just... You don't even get a chance to per like perceive the entire room. You're too fascinated by like this grotesque statue in front of you. It kind of resembles like somebody that you once knew. And it, but it's like melted and deformed, and it's kind of disturbing. Yeah, I'm sort of reminded of the reason that you know I am here in the first place, and it sort of racks my mind. Acolyte Bandak, you're up. I'm just coming down here, and locking it. Um. Anyways, yeah. If you go left, one more. Uh. But it's up to you if you want to or not. But right there. I'll say based on your previous role and everything, now that you look that this uh, wobbly crack in the North Hall, when you look into it, there's a tiny lever. Uh, I'm going to call. Uh, I'm going to hold next to the lever and uh, wait for my compatriots. Okay. It was my action to perceive it anyway. Right? No, no. Well, I'm going to say that was free because you just already knew about it. So you went up and pe peeked in the hole and you could see the lever was there. So that, you only got your movement used so far. Or not even all your movement, probably, but... Uh, I'm going to uh, just advise a lever here, care. It might set off a trap. Uh, and I'm just going to continue to walk. Into... Okay, and as you step in that room, the <clears throat> amidst the eerie glow of a campfire, you see um, lots of catfish and different varieties of fish bones scattered throughout. There are six stone pillars that loom nearby, their surfaces chiseled with intricate spiraling writings and mysterious imagery. And the room is saturated with a pungent aroma of wet dog and a faint hint of brimstone. Alright, he's going to creep up to there and he's going to look at the lever and investigate for traps or see if there's any telltale sign on the lever of what it might You'd have activate. to go kind of here. Oh, sorry. I, wherever yep. it would be. Yep, that's there, fine. There. Um, so yeah, you want to search the lever area for traps? That's an investigation intellect for me, please. And since you're being so specific about it, uh, the DC is lowered, but you're all great anyways. You see no trap here. You figure this lever is used to pull. Um, you've seen similar levers used uh in the past, are usually designed to open something. I'm going to say it looks fine, and I'm going to pull it. All right. You pull it, and a door opens next to you. The stone gives in and scrapes its way in and kind of moves off to the side. I'll take one last step here just to see if I can see anything up through the door, but that is as far as I'm going. Can, when I click on your token, you can kind of see in there, can you? I can see three up yeah, and yeah. a little bit over. Okay, so you can't see much yet. But, I know. Uh, I, I wasn't going in. But you open it, and you just and it slides open, and you step over and peer in, and it appears to be some kind of room in here. Kilvar, you are up. Four. Oh. Um, let's see up here. Um, that's my first move in total right here. One, two, two, three, and look around this room. So do you want do you want to investigate the pillars essentially, or do you want to yeah. root, root through a lot of the debris on the ground? Uh, I'm not rooting through debris or anything. I'm looking for people like dangerous and obvious signs of religious symbols. 
Actually, no, just, just by taking the time to be up close and investigating the pillars. As you're fast looking for re religious symbol symbols and this pillar is covered in all kinds of things, you closely investi investigate it and minuscule screed is written in a language. Let me... Uh, I should mar mark down what languages everybody speaks. Uh, you do not recognize it. Um, but there is some weird writing on this uh, scribbled in with this pillar. Okay. Hrothgar, you're up. And in, okay. And in the dark. <laughs> the dark does not bother Hrothgar. <laughs> Okay, and I know there's not much light, but what do I see? When you step in here, uh, because you have no light, so I can't really describe the room. Because mm. what? I'm going to. I'm going to light up. Uh, should I light my? We have two torches in our party right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Stagger it a bit. Yeah, I'll stagger it a bit, so I won't. I um, will say I need to pause what you're doing and roll on a one or a two. Something happens. Yeah, sure. Oh, go ahead. Oh my. Okay. As so, you stepped into the room, and was that your move? Yeah. So, like, I sort of come up, like I literally shove past um, uh, Luthor and just sort of like go in. Uh, and what happens? Suddenly. <laughs> whizzes past your head, deflects off the wall behind you, and ricochets out uh, near Luther. And the second thing that happens, Luther and Rothgar, you just see out from the darkness a sword, a short sword, impale forward and thrust into Rothgar. Ugh, a blade in the dark! What treachery is this? And now we have to roll initiative. Starting at the very top, Kilgar. I'm running back. I'm going to cast a uh, light on my my weapon. The illumination is appreciated. You did it. You're good. Nice. Yeah, you're good. Can I see what attacked me now? You cannot. I you, can't. It must have darted back. You, 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 yeah, you heard it something like dash up and go and sh shiv you and then run back like patter away. The cowards hide in the darkness. Attack the shadows. <laughs> you got more All movement right. if he wants to. Now that he yeah, has you got movement if you want to move anywhere there. I'm gonna try okay. and okay. come in here. Okay, as soon as you go in, I can reveal things. Um... Oh, I would not have taken the turn right when I got to here. I would have been like that. Yep, I, I assumed <laughs> such. What you see is a set of four humanoids. They're humans? But they seem like they are just something has affected them to their faces are drooping and sagging. They their fingernails are long and kind of extended and sunken eyes partially hunched over. They're humans, but they look look like they've went through a lot of changes. Uh, I'm not going to hesitate. I'm going to drop my torch in the spot where I am and pull out my longbow and shoot drunk bitter mold. First of the Rangers lives on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these uh, these Ranger dice, these Ranger classes aren't, uh, aren't that, they're broken. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. You however, you got movement am, left if you want to do something. Oh, yeah. I'm back to where I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, the thoughtful bitter mold. Uh, this one has a sling and it sees Rothgar and he lets loose a sling. Does that is a hit. 12 hits? Yep. You suffer one damage one. as a rock cracks <sighs> you across the head and it falls back into the room. Um, I'm not going to get into describing the room in too much detail because of the chaos. I will say though that in all this panic, you do pick out a massive pipe organ in the room. But other than that... Where, where's the room for a pipe organ without these guys in here? It's along the far wall. So I'll tec technically, I'll say they can't fall back to these two squares because there's a big pipe oh, Okay, organ. okay. That's what uh, I was saying. Like, if this is the entire room, there's not much room. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Rothgar, you're up. Oh, my turn. Now, let's see. You just got cracked uh, in the head with a rock. Move up here. Okay. okay, I'll type drunk. 
Okay, I'm going to make an attack at the drunk bitter mold. So I'm going to take out my bastard sword uh, and make a swing. A nine oh. does not hit. The angry one now uh, is also using a sling and will whip it at you. Your guys roll so well. Right? <laughs> one, like two, three, like all of your NPCs roll so well and you roll like <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that hurt. Four damage as a uh, rock hits you I, straight in your half the I've got socket. a lot of HP, but like all these little hits are adding up very quickly. <laughs> um Yeah, that hurt. Acolyte Bandic, you're up. I am going to uh, get to here, and I am going to... These things don't look undead, do they? They... Uh, not really. They, you see the eyes in them? The eyes seem to be more living. They're okay. close. They look like they're decayed so much. They almost look like a zombie in appearance, but you feel like they're still living. I want to cast Shield of Faith. You failed. Do you wish to use your luck to maintain, to try to recast that? I do indeed. Roll. Shield, success, shield faith successfully cast. The drunk With my one. holy symbol above my head and chant my spell, and then my armor starts to illuminate. Okay, well I'm gonna roll. Low is Rothgar, and high is the dwarf. So high. So I only rolled a D two. So one. So two means I was gonna say going, what? going after the acolyte. Bad. Yes, attack the short one. The six not, does not uh, hit. <laughs> it repels off of my shield of faith. So we'll just go no. there, and then he'll attack with his short sword. Onto Rothgar. Ooh, you're lucky. No. All right, comes back to Kilvar. You are up. Okay, I'm going to step out. Oh my god. Step over here. Uh, I'm going to heal Rothgar by uh, placing my hand on his back. Nice! Yeah. So how much do you heal? Roll a d6? I'm going to roll a d6. Uh, big numbers, big numbers. You jinxed it by saying big numbers. Oh. Okay, I just put it on you. You heal one. <laughs> Mirdra favors you, but only a little. <laughs> nice. Luther, you're up. Luther's going to run back up and kind of shoot directly over Bandic's head at Drunk Bitter Mold. A 12 hits. Hey, so and that was four the... damage to drunk. Oh, oh. He stands with one HP. And he's gonna... Oh, if and I'm going to back around the corner. Okay. I'm going to roll to see who with a, with the a D3. One is kill, two is ban, and three is wrath. So three is, that's an attack with a sling against the fighter the largest target i do not blame you it misses uh rothgar you're up okay uh i'll step up a bit um let's i'm gonna attack here at the one who just uh, threw it was that thoughtful yeah he just flicked you with a rock uh i'm going to attack angry I'm gonna swing my massive sword and let's see what happens. Oh! Wow. <laughs> I'll, I swing my sword and it like sort of scrapes along like the wall here. Like this room is too small to swing effectively. He flings a flicks a sling back at you because you're trying to attack him directly. Oh my god! Mishap. On a one, he hits his buddy. On a two, his sling snaps. He hits his buddy. All right, and so I'm just going to straight up do the damage. Which he, I'm going to say he already he hits him, so I'm not even rolling. I just want to see what the damage was. Four damage. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh my, jeez! 
<laughs> just rock this guy in the back. Um, I'm going to say he whips it really hard. And you duck it. It hits the wall behind you. Ricochets. And then hits the doubtful bitter mold. Right in the eye socket. And he lets out a scream. As blood gushes out from its eye. Bandek, you're up. I will purge you with the light. Swing my club. <laughs> the guy right in front of you? Yeah, big bunk. Yes. Uh, you did it. Describe how you take him down. Uh, I, I raise my club and my armor is illuminated with faith and I just bring it down, just berating him. Are you moving anywhere? Uh, I will move up and flank with my friends. Okay, Doubtful has a... Uh, sword in hand, and I'm gonna roll. On a one, it's Bandek, and on a two, it's Rothgar. Rothgar, swinging at you with a short sword. Oh, Miss Hap! <laughs> Jeez. One. He's intimidated by my presence. On a one, he drops <laughs> his weapon. On a two, he hits an ally. <laughs> Oh, he too, he hits <laughs> him out. Dude, this is twice these guys like, who tried to attack me and hit the other guys instead. Swinging from left to right with a short sword, he tries to cleave off your head. And you duck, and as he does, it swings through with a cleave attack and hits Thoughtful for how much damage? Yes, deal the damage for me. Oh, my nerves. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Maximum <laughs> damage. <laughs> <laughs> he just as you dunk it, it just sinks deep into the other one's chest. That he looks over with this shocked expression at his other bitter mold relative in disbelief as he crumbles to the ground. Um, Gilvar, you're up. Heal uh, Rothgar. Oh. I'm going to use my walk. Uh, Success. You got it. How much? Uh, these low numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly what he needed to put him back to full. Yeah. Big. I am rejuvenated. Huge, huge bomb heal. Gravestone. You're up. All right. Gonna move up here. See, uh, there's one injured one, so I'm gonna take a shot at him. It missed. Yeah. Uh, Rangers. Now, is there? Do they? Are they both? One that has a sling, and one has like a sword. Yes. Of the two that are left in there. Correct. Yeah. All right. So long as there's one with a sling, back down here. <laughs> Rothgar, you are up. Okay. Uh. uh I, I've realized that like I can't make a wide swing as I normally do, so this time I'm going to like position my bastard sword and try to thrust forward at angry bitter mold. So you're lunging uh, forward see. like an impale attack? Yeah, I'm gonna try and impale. Uh McCann does nothing different. This is just the tactic he's narratively taken. Let's see if it works. It does not, as he steps to the <laughs> side and hits the wall behind him. He's angry because you ad you attacked him. <laughs> we are rolling so bad. To be fair, so have I with two critical fails. But uh, uh, who, who is this one even attacking? You, because you just tried to impale him. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, ahead, Fourteen so. hits you. Yes. Yep. Fourteen and hits me. One, two, three, four. Big this maximum sling damage as a rock hits you in the jaw. I deserve that. Bandek, you're up. Uh, I will again raise my club and <coughs> declare victory for the light. And then... Brah. Big bunk, again. That one right in front of you? Yeah. <laughs> you're rolling so well. Again, you uh, get to kill it. <laughs> and then I step forward again. You swing and his brains go... <laughs> up against the wall and the corpse falls down you step over the top of the corpse got a total of three damage but I have two kills <laughs> I know like <laughs> you've got the like lowest amount of damage and you've killed well actually technically these guys have killed themselves more so than we have 
Kilvar with the big. What is this? Oh, Cure I'm guessing that's me. I'm the only wounded one. Yep. The heal bot. Just, you stand there, keeps his hand on your shoulder, just radiating over and over again. Beautiful. Gravestone, you're up. There's just one, one with a sling left. Coming back in. Looking looking good here for us. So I'll take a shot at him. Ooh. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Which is good. You're already a better ranger than I was. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you rolled an at 20 because they have five hit points and you. Yeah, I was going to say, I was thinking. There's... Oh, that's so good. <laughs> How do you want to do this to Angry Bitterball? So I'm going to wait until I have the perfect opportunity. And when I see that he's kind of paying attention to everything else, I just. As soon as he turns his head, I shoot him right through the temple. Right through the temple. It sticks through blood splatters on the organ behind. And with that, they drop. Though my own blade did not pierce their flesh, my mere presence made them turn on themselves. It was glorious. <laughs> All right. So in the heart of this eerie chamber, a massive pipe organ dominates the eastern wall. It's once I'll pick grand... up my torch again. <laughs> sure. It's once grand facade marred by the ravages of time. Its swollen and cracked wooden frame, a testament to its forsaken history. While brass tubes crust it with bluish green gleam with malevolent allure. And a wobbly stool awaits a musician's touch. <clears throat> uh, above the ceiling soars in a massive arch into darkness. How tall is the ceiling, by the way? You can't see it. It just goes dark. I will investigate for signs of religion. I will search the corpses. Oh, okay. You. Uh, no one. Oh, go ahead. I'll just resolve these two, then I'll go to the other two. So as for religious symbols, uh, you do not see any. Um, nothing to do with religion here at all. Uh, a lot of cool, intricate designs and details on the organ, but nothing of uh, religious note. As for ye who search the bodies... Okay, as you scour through these bodies, you they pretty much have n nothing of value on them, just a bunch of scraps and the bare necessities, like nothing, just a weird bit of the clothing covering their flesh. However, upon one of them, you find a small little uh, like jewelry box, basic jewelry box, worthless. You open it? Oh, yeah. Inside are two lustrous pearls, valued at 40 gold pieces each. All right, so if I pocket the box, does that count as one item, like one box of two pearls, or do I have to use how many slots uh, of inventory for this? Because I only have one slot left, is what I'm wondering. I'll let it just take up one slot. Yeah. Okay. It's, just a, pearls. it's just a box of pearls. They're rather large pearls because they're 40 gold each, so. Yeah, I will say mechanically, I have a lot of carry capacity if you need me to carry anything, depending, while we're here. Well, after this, I will. All right. Yeah. Uh, so if you could put that in my inventory. I'm not doing it secretly. I'll, uh, I'll just say our first loot <laughs> of this place. Yeah, it's not considered a treasure find for XP because it's just looting corpses but uh, of random loot tables and things, but at least it's money in the pocket. Uh, all right, you pocket that. Now the other two who didn't declare, uh, Rothgar and Bandic, what will your actions want to be in this room? Uh, I want to investigate the, uh, the organ. Okay, roll an intellect test for me. With a nice, pretty high roll Ooh. like that, um, you give it a extreme <laughs> look over, and with that, you notice carved in in it. You notice there are imps. Lots of pictures of demonic little imps. You do notice with that as well that the keys are made of ivory, which are actually worth one gold piece each you can tell that there is a 
I don't really want to use the word trap, but there is a mechanism hooked up to this, and it has one of two options when it is played. You don't know what that would trigger or activate, but when it's played, there's two options that could happen. Okay. I will note this. And what would the fighter like to do? I'm going to run my fingers along the keys of the organ and see what happens. <laughs> okay. Just running the fingers along. Um, sort of running, just sort of running them through, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, just sort of like meaty fingers. Are you going sides. from high to low or low to high? So are you end, ending on a high note or a low note? That's essentially what I want to know. Let's say, let's go low. As you stroke your keys along, it goes, it goes from a high sound down to a lower sound. It honks and wheezes and begins to shake the room a little. You just, everything starts to vibrate, including the organ. With that, everything just, <laughs> no, everything just settles down. You gain one XP as a group <gasps> and a luck token. Oh! And we get an XP. And one XP. Oh. I'm guessing that's a good thing. Unless they're both good things. Maybe the other thing was, if I said hi. And uh, anyway. As you were investigating there, Bandek, you pull back, you notice that weird little mechanism that you've seen switch to one of the two options, obviously. I need to look for something before we move. I want to do a check to see if I can find a herb for a solve. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Uh, do I just roll the DC that uh, is listed next to it? There's nothing to click on, really, except for... No, no, you would just roll your uh, intellect, and you have to intellect. match the DC. So you got to declare what one you're trying to do before you roll. The first one, DC 11 for a solve. Okay, go for it. <laughs> oh, no, huh. nothing here. You have failed. That would mean you cannot make healing selves until you complete a long rest. That is correct. <clears throat> All right. We're off to a beautiful start. <laughs> Unless then with you or anyone wants to use a luck token to restore your ability for a healing salve otherwise. Oh, uh, we did get an extra luck. So, I mean, I think it's everyone still has one luck point now. That's one. I'll be nice. I'll say that piano when it shook the room. Since you all got XP, you all got a luck. So make sure everybody has their luck. Okay. I had a luck anyway, but... What's uh, that? No, I, yeah, I had a luck I anyway. Luck. <laughs> I did not, so... I okay. Oh, I thought only one of us spent luck. Cool. So, if you were, is there anyone else gonna want to do anything in the room? Do you want to take the ivory keys, or is it not worth the trouble of trying to rip the keys off the piano? That's completely up to you. Um, I have nowhere to store them if we take them. <clears throat> like, how long do you, we think it'll take? Because like, time is of the essence. If it's four of you, just it will just take the round. If all four of you mm -hmm. can rip off all. 42 ivory keys. Would they take up 42 slots? Nope. I'd say I would make <laughs> all 42 just take up... Uh, I'll just make it take one one slot, I guess. Oh, yeah. In that case, I'll help you rip them off. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna go for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. All right. Sure. It's got slots for days. It's quite loud, obviously, as you're trying to tear <laughs> organ keys off uh, of this grand organ. Easy enough done. No skill checks required. Uh, a round goes by. And who will be carrying 42 ivory keys? I can carry it. I have a lot of carry capacity right now. Right. Unless anyone else objects. I don't know what everyone else is. I know I've got a lot. Do you, do you guys want to let the strong warrior take them? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's fine. All right. So you grab those, and we go to round two. What would you like to do? Who will be leading the party with a torch as well? Looks like we got so who's torches with that, by the way? and Kilvar both have torches. Yeah, I have a, I have a light source. Oh, and so does Luther. You got three light sources going. Yes. We have three? 
Yeah. Um, you know, I don't have a torch, so I won't lead the way, but I do want to stay close to the front, just because I'm very melee focused. I uh, will. Luther hands you his torch and heads to the rear of the party. Okay. I can uh, lead the way if uh, if we want. Okay. Oh, the dwarf. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go I'll keep my torch then. So you can get in your marching order if you'd like there now. And yeah, so I think our marching order is going to be Kilver, me, Bandek, and Luther, if I had to guess. Yeah. Okay. I'll let you all group up there. And now, starting with uh, Kilvar, you can basically move six squares. And then you guys can uh, don't have to wait. You can all follow in behind them. Try to use your keyboard to move around. That way I can see what squares you walk on in case you trigger traps. Yeah. Okay. So I'm uh, going down. Um, as in, la in last game, we were already to the uh, left, if I'm not mistaken. You did. Right? You went in and you investigated the pillars. Remember, there was a strange writing on it. And there's a heavily barricaded door on the far uh, west. Uh, I'll look back over my shoulder. Say, uh, which way do we want to go? Barricaded door or, uh, back to the way we came? Barricaded door. Barricade. Yeah. And with that, before you head over there, as you stand there and talk to each other, you hear, you can go back to your position, back, probably back up one. <laughs> as just as you decide barricade and you're about to head to the right, you hear multiple footsteps from the south way, oh. so over this way, but south, uh, coming around the corner, and a lot of movement of <laughs> and mumbling, <laughs> speaking in a dwarvish slash halfling Ooh. tongue. Don't do this to me. And <laughs> <laughs> it's too soon. And you just hear, uh, "What was that noise?" And it, they sound very close. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna not give them the opportunity to ambush, and I'm gonna go here. Okay. As I'm, I'm stepping out with my uh, weapon kind of raised up, not in like aggression, but it is shining with light, so as if my weapon is a torch. Okay. And as you step down there, I'm just gonna turn down my audio, my uh, my background <sighs> ambience is a bit too. As you step around this corner, you see from the limited light that Kilivar you have ahead of you, you see a bunch of feral looking halflings heading north this way. One of them with a distinct look, more piercing, menacing eyes, wearing heavier chainmail type armor, immediately stops when you round the corner as well, and you see at least one to their left, and from well, actually from your point of view, I just clicked on you. You can actually see uh, three down there, right? Uh, I can see four. A total, a total of four, yes. Well, you see four, but you also hear the sounds of more to the south. Okay, uh, quick question, Eddie. It's these four blocks right here that are that we trapped, right? Correct. Okay. Um, it's all sunken in. It's obvious now. It's obvious that it's a trap. Yeah, that's what I didn't want to take a step over. And, and you just so hear, who goes there? Dwarf? Honestly, uh, uh, Kilvar, cleric of uh, Madeira. And the uh, the Ashen Wolves. Hounds. Ashen Hounds. <laughs> who are you? We are the Howlers. What brings you to the Bitter Mold Keep? We're looking for a relic. A relic? Ashen hounds, you say? Yes, we're not the first group to come here. Mm -hmm. Your crew has caused me trouble recently. I'm going to take a step forward. Okay. He says, not in a grip, but just like a step forward. Just, you know. He says... We have come to an arrangement, but the keep claimed them before they could complete it. 
There's the cool. We're not there. We're not on the angle right there. What was your arrangement? Perhaps we can honor it. Yeah. And you see, with this now, you see a couple more of these as so you kind of step up. You guys can fall in line a little bit. Uh, Eddie, I also want to roll uh, wis insight. That's wisdom, yeah. For what? Yeah, I, I want to. I'm mostly trying to read into. He's telling the truth when he says we had an arrangement. Sure. Uh, go go ahead and give me a check. Uh, Heavy air quotes when he says the keep <laughs> took them. <laughs> the keep. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. <laughs> I thought all that the keep. <laughs> Um, with that, with a roll there, obviously you would have rolled higher. I would have revealed a little more about the key yeah. took them. But with a 12, uh, I'll say he <laughs> does appear to be telling the truth and that he did have an agreement. He doesn't seem to be being deceitful at this point, at least on okay. that that part of it. And he does. There, there is there is a face of recognition when you said Ashen Hounds. Okay. He says, our agreement was to bring Plogrina Bittermold's head to me, and I was to reward them. Hmm. Are you here to complete our agreement? Okay, uh, just a quick pause for a moment, Eddie, because our, we got our full briefing at the start of the last characters. We're looking for the uh, the, the heart and shape of a gem with a crack in it, right? Is it like the cloven heart or something? Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's, it's a cloven heart uh, gem. So it's a gem that's kind of shattered in the middle to make it look like a heart. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, we were told heart. we were told that the bitter moles just kind of disappeared at some point, right? Yeah, like they used to have this big keep. There were a bunch of noble, like a big noble family, and then suddenly they all just stopped. And then there was rumors they went underground, and then they haven't been heard from in a long time. Okay. You know all that up front, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Um, why do you want the head of the, uh, the bitter mold? Uh, they... Is she guilty? Uh, yeah. Guilty of a lot of things. She's killed so many of my crew. She... She kills not even my crew. She kills your crew. She kills everything that comes down here. Oh, then we will kill her. Hmm. You speak on behalf of all of your crew? As he looks to the other two that he can see. Uh, Bendek will oh, nod. Could, he couldn't see you, but now he can. Cool. I assume you're going yeah. here, so as to not go in the yes. pit in the trap. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Very well. And just to show you that I want you to succeed... I will pay you up front. And in fact, if you can return her head to me, I will return. Uh, hmm. And he sees pondering, kind of trying to decide what he's going to pay you. He says, yes, as a sign of faith, I'll give you some of the belongings that we found on your fallen brethren. Of character, it better not be a dagger. <laughs> and with that, <laughs> he, uh, he he turns around to one of the uh, halflings and says, Clove, hand it over. And with that, there's a mace and a shield. And he throws those on the ground in front. And then he's like, what else was it? And then Clove reaches in her pocket and pulls out a fat iron key. Tosses that there. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll grab the key. I'll say, uh, what about arrows? Ah, there was some, but my crew took them. Uh, I'll take the uh, the mace and the, the shield. Okay. And with that, he also says, ah, there was that one thing. Right, Gabby? And he turns around, and now you notice that one of them is critically injured with one health back here. Uh, and you can see Gabby's just like, mm, no, 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 no. He's like, I, I, I almost died for this. And then you see 
Gordok, who hasn't introduced himself, I guess, to you yet, so looks sternly at this uh, female halfling and just says, That dagger has cost me nothing but trouble. Hand it over and make sure you do it willingly. And he looks back to you all as she begrudgingly pulls out a silver dagger. <laughs> <laughs> and she begrudgingly goes over and just drops it on the ground in front of you. And he looks back at her mm. and he said, and, and uh, he says, that was willingly, right? And Gabby just nods. And then he looks back to you and he says, ah, that's a cursed dagger. It's known as the Vendetta's Kiss. And, uh... Let's just say you don't want to steal it from the living or the dead. But I want it out of my keep. It's clean to too many of my kind. I'm going to pick it up. A torch went out. We only got the light spell. Okay. Many torches. But light spell's good for a while. So yeah, pick, pick it up and pray I don't die. Well, you pick it up. In faith that she Gabby was telling the truth and she was she didn't want to give it over but she followed her command and willingly gave it over so and uh, and I just want to confirm uh, does Benedict already have a shield no Benedict did not uh, have no. a shield or I, I, I was sure <laughs> okay I didn't have either of those things I'm gonna pause the game for a sec and what were you, would you yeah. what were you using for a weapon a club he he poured. Okay. He rolled no money off the start. <laughs> he oh jeez! Okay. Uh, for some reason, I thought you had a shield. I was thinking, if it's an extra shield, I'll take it. But no, you take it. You need it. It was. He literally had a wooden club, and that was it. <laughs> oh. He also says, "Ah, I didn't introduce myself. I am Gordok Breeg." Well, it looks like, and he looks around. I really want you to succeed. And you can see, like, a hint of desperation in his eye. I, uh, I tell you what. And he looks over the two dwarves. Uh, and then he looks back and goes, Clove, Gabby, give them your chain mail. What? No! Ah, you know we have more in camp and we're headed there now. Hmm! And they take a moment and they strip off their chain mail armor, which is only, it's a small size, so it'll only fit halflings and dwarves. Um, so, will either of you like chain mail armor? Sure. Take it. Is that a yes? Like 60 gold. Yeah, I'll take it, yeah. So, you guys both take a moment and you. It'll take, you, obviously, a couple minutes there to. Take off leather armors, put them in your backpacks, and you put on. I will point out that this chain armor is very rancid, stinky, uh, like you can imagine what the armor of a essentially like a barbarian type lifestyle would have. And it smells of wet dog, but hey, if it'll keep you alive, right? Uh, the halflings are just staring as the dwarves change. <laughs> and he says, That is it. We're about to leave the keep to meet up with our pack, gather reinforcements, yeah, count our numbers, and we will return. If we are not waiting at the fireplace, and he points to the room that you know to the west, when you return... Head outside the keep, and we'll meet. I'm sure we'll meet you there. Yeah, bring me that witch's head. And with that, unless you're going to do anything, um, they all depart. Let's go carve ourselves a witch then. Seemed awfully willing to give us that stuff. They definitely look desperate. Almost as if their ranks have been heavily thinned as of late. <laughs> um, Dangerous times. Yes. 
And with that, we will spin it around, It'll go back to the top, uh, kill Var. Go to the bear cave, like we had planned. You guys can all follow along with the light here. I'm moving his token. So I'm going to pass by a full round. Uh, based on the dialogue, I'll say you get about this far. By the time it's the top of round three. <clears throat> um, do you guys need another description for this room? I already described it twice. I don't know if you remember it, but it's up to you. <laughs> You mentioned pillars with like carvings or writing on it, and there's a barricade on the door to the fire end. Yeah, that's right. So, um, if you. Now, I wasn't in this room, but you mentioned it was a language that we didn't understand, like where, you know, more people are in this. Do any of us recognize the language? Well, I'll say that it is in, and then you guys can tell me if you know it or not. Diabolic. No. Uh, we'll start at the top of the round here now. You guys see a heavily barricaded door to the west. And yeah, it's going to look like it's going to take quite a feat of strength between all of you to try to get that down. So how do you wish to proceed? Give it a go. <laughs> I cast Fighter. <laughs> all right. Hey, watch this. I don't know if it's okay. an assisting thing yeah. or if we both roll separate checks or about, what we need to do. Yeah, I was about to say with the assisting uh, checks as I mentioned, if you all go up there, which will take this round uh, to get, and if you all want to go up to the barricade to the far west, I assume Kilvar will as well, um, then you can all assist. So anyone who is assisting can add their strength score. So Kilvar has plus zero. Um, also, it reduces plus two. Okay, you got a plus two. Ranger, I, 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 a plus two. Oh, this is nice because I also have grit, so I'm going to have advantage on this. I, I have plus two as well. <gasps> Ooh. So one, two, three, four. And so Rothgar, An advantage. Rothgar will take point. He's the strongest of the party with grit. Um, and so you get an additional plus four. And Kilvar's assistance will just help reduce the time a bit. Like, as you guys are chucking stuff, he's moving it out of the way. Uh, and so, I will tell you that the DC is DC 18. Okay, so with all the bonuses, I've got a plus 6 in total on the D20 and advantage. Mm -hmm. So, our chances are good. Knock on wood. Okay, let's try. <gasps> that <That's> 20 <laughs> all right so you can describe to me as you with lead with your party's assistance that's just a he anything in special you want to do with your critical to make it awesome <laughs> uh i i just grip like my meaty hands over like the barricades and like see like the veins popping in my arms i sort of like grip down and the wood is splintering under my fingers and like as I feel it's weakening, I'm just gonna like give it one swift kick right in the center and like tear the barricade in two as it just splinters to both sides. Nice. Okay, with that I unlock the barricade. So you'll be able to pump through on your next turn. However, we're just ending round three, so I have to roll for a random encounter. You haven't had any of these, yes. And now we will because I said that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right, so top of round four, it is open. I'm going to crack a torch after that breaks down right before we go into this room. Sure, go and light one up on your character there. Good, because the light spell will be going out soon. Okay, we'll do the same tab order, I guess. 
So start to move six squares at a time and precisely where you are so I can see if you fall into traps or yeah, whatever. I'm just checking my light source. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so before I would step down, I'm going to look down into the dark and see what I can see. Just a long, desolate hallway. This side, is it, a bit, bit of loose. Is it hallway or stairs? Because that looks like stairs. Oh, it's stairs. Yep. It's a long hallway and the stairs lead down first. You're going deeper underground. Okay. I'll do a list uh, check. We, I was going to say, can we check for traps just where this is barricaded? There might be other things. Yeah, if you want to use your action before you move. <clears throat> I think it might be a good idea. All right, just so, yeah, you can all declare an action you're going to do each and then move six squares afterwards. But do your actions first if you want. Uh, can I assist someone else? Like, if, like, because I look like that. Is that what you were trying to do as well, uh, Steve? Nope. Just doing a listen check. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to look to ahead to see if I noticed check. anything of note for trap wise. All right, so this is where, yeah. Th so we'll just start with the top real quick for actions. Bandek, what do you what do you want to do for your action? I'm uh, I'm going to just keep an eye out and follow along. Okay. Do you, so need, you don't you did is there any particular action? Or you just want to just not really. <laughs> Just like like a general perception check. I guess I'm looking for traps. Okay, so you're searching the area. Um, yeah. All right, so you can give me a wisdom check, uh, Luther. What were you gonna do? Listen check. Okay, go ahead, roll it up. I got an 18. That's just Ooh. a wisdom. So I'll take it. Woo! And Kilvar, what were you doing? Uh, looking down for traps and shit. Okay, so you can do a wisdom check as well, if that's what you're doing. And what about you, Rothgar? Oh, we have a few people check for traps. I'll go ahead and listen alongside uh, <laughs> Luther. So uh, that's a wisdom check, right? Mm-hmm. Look at the rolls tonight, guys. We are on fire. Just watch now. We roll combat like <laughs> single digits all around. I will point out that listening, you do not hear much, except for you hear the faint little, very faint, very far off, uh, a slight little sound of a splashing of water, but it's coming far to the west, so faint you can barely hear it. Now, those who were searching the area, uh, you both rolled uh, very high as well. As you pierced down this hallway, you do notice something odd in the wall right here. It's like there's a, a faint crack running down it. It just kind of looks a little odd and out of place. Okay, I'm going to proceed down. So you guys can do your moves and then we're going to go down to me. And then I'm going to point at the wall and just say, uh, looks like something maybe there. Was that the wall, like, in the space in front of me? Yeah, it's, like, right there. Okay. Like, the bottom wall, right in front of you. Mm-hmm. So, so it goes to me, maybe, and, and it looks, just looks like a crack, a long, like, crack, probably about a six-inch by three-inch crack in the wall. But you, I mean... How high is it? Uh, it's about mm, four, four and a half, five feet high. So uh, a, <laughs> how tall am I? <laughs> you're, you tell me, you're a dwarf. Yeah. See, I'm fairly tall and I'm by that, so I can sort of like run my hands along the wall and probably attempt to investigate it. So it goes to me, and we go to the top of five. Remember, the slower you go, the more random encounters, but it might also keep you alive going slow. So it's yeah. definitely up to you. <laughs> I'm I'm going to uh, reach my foot forward while leaning back and push down on this brick in on the floor. So that's going to be like my action. Did I you, guess to put pressure on this plate without, you know. Did you just want to basically take an action to roll intellect to investigate that specific brick? No, I'm going to step on it without stepping on. It. <laughs> okay. Like um, I'm going to lean back and step on it, duck down. You know, uh, I'm real, not that smart. So you step, put your foot forward, and you step on that plate. Yeah, well, like, kind of ducking and leaning back. I don't want to be in the projectile path of that hole. Yeah, you put your foot there, you put press down. Nothing seems to happen. Okay, so I'm going to duck and walk past. Duck and walk past, okay. <laughs> Ducking dwarf. <laughs> All right, stop. 
Go back. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. So. No, I, I pressed her, I should say. Just put it I have to hide this role for reasons for now. I just didn't you know, uh, Should we was... investigate the crack? Rolling. Uh, I'm not going to say with advantage. You were well aware the crack was there, and I'm sure you were alert to the crack. So it'll be a normal roll. Why did it? Oh. What? And your armor class is now 15, right? Yep. Wow. So Thanks to Chainmail. Um, all right. As you step by and you're crouched above your head, uh, a crude-looking arrow shoots over Kilvar's head and deflects off the wall and hits the ground. You can finish. Ah, you, can, you can finish your move. Okay. Did the plate Ooh. or the floor like go down when he did it? Was it a pressure? You did not see anything to trigger it. No. Hmm. I'm gonna step down here, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll put my shield, like take my shield in both hands and put it over the hole. Okay. And then uh, that, that'll be your come, action. Come yeah, that'll yeah. be your action. All right. So he plugs up the crack with a shield. The rest of you guys can take your moves or actions. Uh, I'm Is going it? to move forward. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This one is oh. with... Oh, a light did someone's went torch out. go out? Ooh, this one Light's was with still, advantage, and I still missed. Um, yes, one, to one the light source of the spell off Kilvar went off, but you yeah, still have the torch. Yeah, that's um, Yes, but otherwise, Bandek, you're stepping across, and... Uh, a crude arrow comes out from another little crack that you could barely see in this wall again probably only a couple inches long two or three inches wide uh, hard to see at the, it was at the far distant range of your uh, light source prior to moving up and uh, just as the light goes out too uh, but yeah it just whizzes past your ear and ting, deflects off the wall next to you but you can continue so to move if you have more movement left did the one to the right go off again, or was this uh, was no. it only that one? No, you did not hear one hit your shield. No. Okay, I'm gonna keep it there just in case for now. Right, so it seems to be like once off, or at least it has to reload after a certain amount of time. I'm gonna say uh, put one or two. Okay. okay. Uh, what? What? Excuse me. What action do you want to do? I uh, otherwise it's gonna. Yeah. What are you gonna do? <laughs> uh uh, my action is going to be light a torch. Oh, okay. And the rest of you guys can do your movement wherever you... I'm only moving as far as Kilbar. Okay. And I am using my action to search for more of those slits now that I know what I'm looking for. Okay. Give me a wisdom check. Now I'm going to make this only a nor normal at this point. 12 because you're... Kind of got an idea of what you're looking for. You just see these two cracks, and other than that, nothing. Just up ahead, there's a hallway heading south right here, and then uh, you can head off what turn looks like it turns into caverns to the far west. But as for nothing else, looks out of the ordinary here from by searching the area. But there's like, two cracks. Um, did you move, Kilbar? You did, did you? Uh, I, I moved just the two blocks. The yeah, okay, so I've there's a crack here and then a crack beneath Bandic. And so... Beneath? So, yeah, like, he, where he just moved, he moved right to the spot where he got shot oh, at and okay. stopped. I, I, for some reason, I thought there was a crack on the one he's standing on, like an arrow shot up at his crotch. Oh, no. <laughs> I caught me in the crack. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, with some that, uh, boot yeah. maker is like, oh, I'm really gonna mess with this guy. <laughs> so now, if you're all going there and the round ends and it comes down to my turn, uh, sorry, I had to go back one because so you all finish yours and it goes to the game master at the bottom of four. Um, you hear a boom, hit on your shield, Kil uh, Kilvar. Oh, it reloads. And Bandek, you're aware. <laughs> you're aware this time. But uh, there's another arrow coming. 
but it will not be at advantage because you're aware of it. And I'm surprised you just stayed there. That's why I asked your action. I was hoping you'd like block it or do something. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't do anything this turn. <laughs> it rolled a natty one. So from, yeah, inside the wall, you hear this like snapping sound. And I will say the ranger is well aware of this sound. It is the sound of a bow breaking. I'll say that one is disabled. Uh, but otherwise, we can go to the top of the round. Um, I know Rothgar did. I thought. No, no, no. Is there I didn't do you, anything last round. Is there anything you wanted to do? Um, That's the weird thing when we're not paying attention to the initiative. It's just kind of like. I don't know. It's just weird. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, now that we know it's there, I mean, like, unless anyone else wants to do anything else, why don't we just spend our action or movement to at least move to the other end of the hall? Just as a group. Otherwise, I mean, like, uh, you know, I just move forward. Well, you're the only one that got an action left, so you can dash if you want, and then we're going to go okay, back to a new yeah, round. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll move forward just to get to the other end here. I don't have a light source, so I just see whatever's here. Okay. Now, at the top of the round again, so um, you all can take one movement and one action each in whatever order you want, if we think it'll speed it up. I'm just going to follow him walking exactly where he walks. Okay. I'm going to use my action to uh, cast my light. Oh, nice. And, uh, yeah, light it up and you'll reveal there's a very narrow, you know, why well, narrow? I mean, like a four to five foot passageway heading south. So, yeah, to the south, you just see a long, narrow skinny passage and to the west you see that the keep seems to end this is as far as the keep goes and it opens up into deep caverns and just like natural ground formation along the wall so that? which way i'm back sorry about that yeah no worries you got a move and an action left there mike and so does i think some of the party has some as well uh i have mine used you Okay, so I guess we're going down this way then. Depends. The group is just asking where do you well, want to go. Yeah, like uh, it's more of a cavern. It doesn't mean like uh, if they, if the family went into hiding, they may have went below the keep, or they may have stuck to the keep because it is their own. I believe we should go south. I'm I'm gonna look down south, Eddie, to see if I can see any cracks in the walls or anything like that. That'll give you a 30-foot check down there. Uh, there. No sign of anything. I will point out that to the west, above you, the ceiling of the chamber is alive with dangling, crowded stalactites, their surface slick with moisture, and the constant sound of splashing to the west reverberates through the cavern. Uh, And that's all you can get from where you're currently positioned. I see a door. There's a door 30 feet down. If we want to all move our action, we can move down to the door and then use our actions. Okay. As soon as you make it to here, <laughs> um, as you all begin to funnel down this tight hallway under Kilvar's lead, there is a sudden shot from the wall to the right. And... Ching! It deflects off of your shoulder piece and hits the wall behind you. But to your right, Kilvar, you notice another crack in the wall. I'm going to tap it with my mace that's glowing and go, arrow. <laughs> okay, and you can keep moving like you were planning yep. on now. And then two blocks down, I'm going to be extra careful. I'm going to put my shield up on the side of my head, that kind of thing. All right, well, I'll just say your action is kind of like being a bit more defensive, right? So, yeah. yeah, finish your movement then. And then everybody else can fall in line up to six squares and do your action. And then uh, then we'll go on to me. Okay. And this is a door there. And like, well, I guess what do we see as we sort of come here to this opening? Yeah. So the, again, t- uh, this is another where the seems like you're at the edge of the keep, or at least as far as the construction had made it. 
and as the floor tiles end and it becomes a cavern, looking like it probably matches up with uh, at least close proximity to the cavern, just, you know, 60 feet uh, or 40 feet north of you. Other than that, a tunnel continues to head south, and there is a iron door to your right. So, door south or into the cavern. I would like to check the door. All right, you want to investigate it? Yep, give me an intellect test to search it specifically, investigate it, see if you can see anything unusual about it. Uh, intelligent? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> you size up that door, and it appears like it's just a set of a big double doors. Set of double doors. Uh, it does not appear to be trapped or locked. However, there is a. Uh, seems like there was uh, blood, some dried, long dried blood stain coming from within that door out to the far west. So basically, all along here, heading out towards the cavern area, looks like something was dragged and leaving a blood mark. Does it look like it was dragged out from that room or into that room? That would require an investigation check, you smart fighter, you. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I'm going to point out to the group. Okay. Let's do an investigation check. Because he was specifically checking out the door for traps and uh, any mechanisms yeah. and stuff, but the blood is something separate. Uh, you size it up and oh. you ca cannot tell the direction it is going. Ranger, would you like to come up and take a movement or an action or anything? Did I hear the reload of the arrow trap? Because I haven't moved past it yet. Uh, no, you have not heard anything. All right, then I would move down to investigate the blood trail if they brought it up. Yeah, you can see it. That was a clear thing to see. I just brought it up a little late after we investigated it. But yeah, intellect test. DC, I'll only make it 12. Normal. Uh, you can see that the blood trail was being pulled from the door out to the west. So it's been, the, it was pulled in this direction, out to the cavern. Okay, so I'll bend down, look at the blood trail, stand up, say it's going that way. And it looks like, now that you closely examine it, it looks like it was multiple bodies being pulled that way. But I'm not going to tell you what size or anything, because you only got a 12, but... At least you can see it was multiples pulled that way. Oh, I, I got a 17. Yeah, but, uh, but you would need an 18 for me to kind of tell you what race. Oh, no, you said I only got a 12. I'm oh, I'm sorry. I looked at the, something wrong then. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, with that, yeah. So, you know the direction, and then you were able to pick up also up that there was uh, multiple bodies. So an additional detail. The third detail of exactly what races were pulled, <laughs> then that would probably be an 18. <laughs> Hopefully halflings. Uh, yeah. You can probably track this if you want, but we should check out the door first, since whatever was in there is probably no longer in there. Which direction were they pulled to? I point with my... Into the cavern. Into okay. the cavern. So, check the door? That's what I'm asking. Like, it, yes, or... I... It, uh, my character door. said it makes sense to check the door because it's well, most likely whatever was in there is gone. Bandek already in f thoroughly investigated it, and in, did you? Re I guess you told him that it was clear, or did you? Yeah, I said I relayed the information to the group. Okay, so my uh, Bandek lets you know that there's the door looks clear to him. Okay. So we we'll go okay. back to Let's the top, to the top of round six. Uh, you guys kick open the door. Yep. Punch. Uh, which I will light up. <laughs> Heavily bloodstained room up ahead. <laughs> this room looks somewhat familiar. So what is the plan? You guys can do moves, double moves, or moves and actions, whatever you want. Well, first, I'm going to look ahead for traps. All right. So give me a wisdom test. So you're going to search the area, is what you're doing. Yes. Uh, so that was with a 16. I'm going to point out that you notice something odd. 
there is, appears to be odd uh, cracks in the brick walls to the north and south here. Is it like the arrow cracks or some other kind? No, of these look more like fist size cracks. I was like one step in. That's kind of melted in on itself, but at the same time, they look a little odd and out of place. Enough to alert honestly, you. Honestly, the, uh, the space ahead of me, something looks off at the walls. I'm just yeah. kind of gesture doing with my, uh, my light. And as you step up, you can see now. It is similar to the lever that you noticed previously. Uh, it looks like it, each side has a lever that you could kind of just narrowly squeeze your hand in and be able to pull a small lever, which is usually used to activate something or to open or close something. Never mind, it's just levers. Pull the lever! Pull the lever. <laughs> oh! Just like the previous thing. Okay. <laughs> we are stopping. Uh, well, uh, first, thing oh that, first thing that's happening oh is as soon as that big door slides over, um, I'll let you all take a movement action before I roll initiative, if you'd like. Beca because, uh, real quick. But as you go, and as soon as that door slides across and you're standing looking down, you... All right, I can I can now turn off my private rolls as a arrow, crude arrow flies past you over both of the dwarves' heads and sticks and reflects off of the stone wall behind you. And with that, we're going to roll initiative. All right, everybody, the next episode will be here on the screen if it's available at this time. Otherwise, if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button, comment down below, let me know your thoughts on the adventure, share this with your friends if you want to help this channel grow, and as always, stay in the light.